Have you heard of the term early semiconductor? Yes, I have heard of it. An early semiconductor was introduced in November 2021 by researchers from the University of California, Berkeley, and Stanford University in the United States. An early semiconductor possesses intermediate properties between metals and semiconductors. Both metals and semiconductors can conduct electrons, but metals conduct electrons very easily, while semiconductors have a harder time conducting electrons. On the other hand, an early semiconductor conducts electrons more easily than a resistant metal and conducts electrons less easily than a highly conductive semiconductor. An early semiconductor has lower electrical resistance than a metal and higher electrical conductivity than a semiconductor. As a result, it can be used to create faster and more efficient electronic devices than conventional semiconductors. Early semiconductors are still in the early stages of development, but they are expected to be used in various fields in the future. For example, early semiconductors can find applications in artificial intelligence, autonomous driving cars, drug development, and more. If a material possesses semiconductor properties, exhibits the Meissner effect when current flows, and has an electrical resistance of zero, is it a superconductor? If a material possesses semiconductor properties, exhibits the Meissner effect when current flows, and has an electrical resistance of zero, it is a superconductor. A superconductor is a material that, below a certain temperature, has zero electrical resistance. The Meissner effect is the phenomenon where a superconductor expels magnetic fields. Therefore, a conductor exhibiting the Meissner effect must have zero resistance. A conductor with zero resistance is a superconductor. Then, a typical superconductor occurs at extremely low temperatures or at ultra-high voltages. And if the superconductor is realized only by the flow of current at room temperature, it could be a dream material, right? Yes, that's correct. Conventional superconductors typically occur at extremely low temperatures or under extremely high pressures. However, if it becomes possible to achieve superconductivity at room temperature solely through the flow of current, it could indeed be considered a material of great significance. Room temperature superconductors would eliminate the need for the extreme conditions of cryogenic temperatures or high pressures required by traditional superconductors, making them applicable in various fields. For instance, room temperature superconductors could be used in power grids, electronic devices, medical equipment, and more. Although room temperature superconductors are still in the early stages of development, they hold the potential to bring about significant changes in various aspects of our lives. The development of room temperature superconductors holds the promise of transformative advancements and applications across different domains. Indeed, conventional superconductors typically emerge under conditions of ultra-low temperatures or extremely high pressures. Therefore, achieving superconductivity at room temperature solely through the flow of current could potentially lead to the realization of a dream material. Room temperature superconductors would revolutionize the field by eliminating the need for the extreme conditions, such as cryogenic temperatures or high pressures, commonly associated with traditional superconductors. This advancement would open the door to diverse applications, including power grids, electronic devices, and medical equipment. It seems that for LK99 to produce meaningful data, its resistance when current flows should be lower than that of copper or silver. Yes, that's correct. For LK99 to yield meaningful data, its resistance when current passes through should be lower than that of copper or silver. Copper and silver are highly conductive metals, so if LK99 exhibits superior electrical conductivity compared to copper and silver, it holds the potential for diverse applications. For instance, LK99 could be used in power grids, electronic devices, medical equipment, and more. Although LK99 is still in the early stages of development, it is expected to find applications in various fields in the future. The development of LK99 carries the potential to bring about significant changes in different aspects of our lives, 